Okay, so we've got a piece of paper A4 size. We've got our brush here. It can be either a long bristle brush or one of these brushes. We can do it with um, a, a smaller brush, but it'll just take a little bit longer, that's all. So they're ideal brushes if we have any of them in the classroom. As far as paint, I've just got some cobalt blue, pretty much any blue paint will do, and we've got some titanium white, uh, or just white, it doesn't really matter if it's titanium or not. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, turn that into our blue sky for our background, uh, for our heating room. Also, I was talking about paddles and things like that, these are ideal, if we have any of those, they're really, really good, hopefully you can see them nicely, otherwise, Anything will do, just for when we're going to scrape. I've got some rollers as well, which I'll show you in a minute. And also, like, everyone will need a tub of water. Go okay, back to our blue. Again, we'll squeeze that on there. Nice little blue there. Like I said, you don't need too much. Too much blue. That's our blue. As you can see too, see that page over there, if you can see it in the camera, how it's curving up. I'll show you what to do with that. So I'm going to start from the top, just blend all that, get that nicely blended, just left to right, right across the page, and I'll start to keep that white, in that right there. Bottom of the page. This is that really shiny one. Now remember that paper cutout that we had of the A4 size stencil? So all I've done there is just put it over the painting that we've already done for the background and now I'm just using some yellow ochre to be able to put the top. Use my little plastic spatula or paddle there and I'll just start to smear that down the page. It will possibly push out on the other side and then you do have to fix that up but as you can see I'm just smearing that down and when we pull that off you've got a nice little uh, let's say emu stencil that we're ready to paint all our feathers on. And here I've just got some dark green and some light green and I've just got a plastic spatula again or as we like to say in the game a uh, palette knife and I'm just using that to just smear at the bottom so it looks like he's looking through some bushes or foliage. And now I'll just clean that paint off my palette knife and now I'm going to make up a slurry of what paint we had left over. Some yellow, some light green and dark green. I'm going to use a lot of water there and really start to mix that into a nice slurry but not too much that it becomes too translucent. And now I'll just put that down and start to splash that all over the page. And I like it because it just gives it a little bit more, let's say, interest and it just also makes the painting look a little bit more busy and vibrant. Now here I've switched out to a round brush and that lets me be able to just add a little bit more detail and have a little bit more control over painting these feathers all over, uh, let's say Eric. Hey, let's call him Eric the Emu. And that way I can start to really control every brush stroke. But I'm just mixing here between a black, a raw umber and a yellow ochre. And those will be the three main colours, even though black's not a colour, but anyway, let's not get into that. But that'll be the three main colours we're going to use for all of his feathers. Now I'm going to just mix up a nice grey for his beak. And as you've seen there, that was just adding a little bit more white. So I'm just adding now a little bit of black to that white. And that is how I mix a nice grey. Here I'm going to do a diamond shape for his beak. And then I'm just going to start to add a few more darker highlights with the black. Now don't worry if you don't get it exactly symmetrical or right looking. Because nothing in nature is really that spot on. It's always got to have a few little lumps and bumps to make it look a little bit more authentic. Now we're going to get into his eyes. I'm just going to paint a white there in a nice little circle shape. Clean out my brush and then I'll start to add a little bit of that white and grey. or Let's say straight white into that wet beak. So it's wet paint and it's just going to allow me to just add a little bit more colour. 
or shade to his beak and then we can start to add a few more feathers down the, his neckline there and again it's just using the tip of the brush and I'm virtually just tickling the canvas or in this case paper and uh, trying to run all the feathers in a direction that it makes it look like it is feathers coming off his uh, let's say neckline. Now I'm not even worried about cleaning my brush too much here. I'm just mixing between the, the burnt umber, the black and the uh, yellow ochre. And um, if I really need to make it dark, I'll just concentrate on the two darker colours and then I'll just come over and lighten it up a little bit with the yellow ochre. Now here I'm just using a little bit of that raw umber, which is just a dark brown, and that will let me be able to just add some highlights to that beak. Now I probably could have spent a little bit more time on his eyeballs here, but for the sake of the exercise, I've got a bit of straight white onto the yellow ochre at the bottom of his eyeball, and now I'm just using two big daubs of titanium white for reflection that's on his eyeballs. And now it's time to put down the brush, do my little finger wobble, and voila, 